Greetings. My name is Minister Deidre Russo, and I am founder of Truly Well Wives and co-founder of Together Marriages alongside my husband. I wanted to talk to you wives about the war you win. And the theme scripture is coming from 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5, and 1 Peter 2, 11. And we want to make sure that we're winning. And today I want to talk about how to balance the differences. As couples, we're going to have differences. You know, I'm different from my husband. He's different from me. My husband is the oldest of four children. I'm um, number 10 of 11 children. So he was always a boss in all areas of his life. I was always the one that had to do whatever the bosses told me to do. So that brought a lot of clashing, but we had to learn how to balance our differences. Difference are necessary and it's a necessary part of life because God made the vast variety of not just creatures, but even with mankind, man is different from man. You know, we're just different. So what happens when two different people come together as one in a marriage, how do they balance up? So I wanted to give you three strategies on how to balance the differences because you being different from your husband, it could be a blessing in your marriage if you allow it to be. I know in my marriage is a blessing because my husband is strong in some areas that I'm weak, but then I'm strong in some areas that he's weak in. And so we got to have that balance. It is no need for me to have two of me. If I had two of me, if my husband was just like me, to be honest with you, I probably would be frustrated because I need his differences. I need that balance. And so, you know, I want to just talk about the strategies. So the first one is, let love lead. As much as we have heard this phrase time and time again, it remains as true as ever. This is a powerful revelation for them that will respond to it. With love, we can overlook a lot of shortcomings. And that's 1 Peter 4, 8. And also 1 Corinthians 13. It also gives us a very vivid picture of what the God kind of love looks like. So we got to love our husbands unconditionally. A lot of times we love them with conditions. With my husband, if you take out the trash, I'll love you. If you pay the bills, I love you. If you'll take care of me and take care of my heart, I'll love you. But that's not what the word of God said. The word of God told us to love unconditionally. And so a lot of times it's with conditions. So we shouldn't be loving our husbands with conditions because guess what? We don't want them to love us with conditions. I know I sure don't. I want my husband to love me according to the word of God. And then we got to look at, you know, what is the difference? You know, what can make you love your husband the way you're supposed to love your husband? And you got to have a meeting of the mind. You got to, you know, talk to the Lord and let the Lord guide you. Because a lot of times as wives, I know as this wife, a lot of times I was in the flesh opposed to the spirit. But whatever you feed is going to win. If you feed the spirit, the spirit is going to win. If you feed the flesh, the flesh is going to win. So we got to continue to feed the spirit. How do we speak, feed the spirit? Devotions. You should be having daily devotions on your own individually and then with your husband collectively because that work, my husband and I, we have devotions every Saturday or Sunday, just depending on what we got going on. And when we have devotions and we get in God's word together, it makes our marriage so much better because Christ needs to be in the center of our marriage. The second thing is talk about your differences. They say a problem shared is a problem half solved. If shared with the right person, of course, who else would be the best person to share your problems with than your spouse? Make it a point of action to have an open relationship where you can talk about anything when you discuss what makes you different, the things you like and the things you dislike with understanding and being reasonable. Then your spouse will definitely understand why you behave the way you do at certain times and how to handle it. It is very comforting to know that something is happening and the way it is happening. So we got to talk about it. We have to have a meeting of the mind. When we're talking about it, it needs to be a dialogue, not a monologue. So when you talk with your husband, you know, talk about the things that you really need to talk about. Don't beat around the bush or whatever, because we got to get to the point. As wives, I know as this wife, 
I used to talk around. How, the men don't like that. Your husbands don't like that. They want us to get to the root. What's the root cause? What's making you do whatever it is that you're doing? So I just want to encourage you to talk about the differences. The, um, God put differences in us for a reason. You know, and I thank God that my husband is not the way I am. Because as I stated, I used to be a shopaholic. What if my husband was a shopaholic just like I was? We would be in debt upon debt upon debt. So I thank the Lord. He always was a saver and I always was a spender. I learned how to be a spender because we talked about it. You know, I looked at what my mom did. I just saw my mom shopping and we had the nicest of everything. I didn't see her saving. My parents separated when I was four, so I didn't see that kind of marriage. So I searched high and low for that marriage. And when I couldn't find it, the Lord showed me how to create it. So I'm still learning. I'm still growing. We're still developing as a couple. So I just want to encourage you to just talk with your spouse and talk about the differences. I'm telling you, it will, it will be a game changer in your marriage. Trust me when I tell you, because if we're not talking about if we're not communicating, then where's the marriage going? The marriage is not going to stand still. Either it's going to increase or it's going to decrease. Either it's going to incline or it's going to decline. So you decide what it is that you want in your marriage. For me, I want my marriage to grow. So I'm going to dialogue with my husband. I'm going to let him know as much as possible. The third thing is work together to create the balance. Work together to balance the differences. It is just that simple. It's just like arithmetic. You take the greater and add and add it and um, subtract it from the lesser and it equals out. It will balance out. And, you know, what does this mean? When you find someone stronger on certain issues, then be the anchor in that area. Likewise, when you are weak, your spouse makes up for you. It takes a great deal of understanding to navigate the waters of marriage and with help of God, we can succeed. So we can't just look at it like, okay, well, whatever it is that your husband don't have, trust me, God balanced it out. It's balanced in your marriage. So I'm encouraging you to sit and have a dialogue with your husband and figure out what the balance is in your marriage. You know, I was the immature one in our marriage. My husband was always the mature one. And guess what, wives? I learned to be mature because my husband is mature. You know, when I bought those immature, like I said, I'm number 10 of 11 children and I was always spoiled, you know, but I wasn't a, a spoiled brat, but I was always spoiled. But my husband helped me balance that because he's the oldest of four and it was like he was a decision maker from younger. So what we got to do is we just got to learn from our husbands and it's not that difficult. We just got to know that God, whatever we need, God has for us. God said he would never leave us. He would never forsake us. So when we can't, uh, when we think that we can't go on and we can't go, we got to take God at his word. We got to remember what God said in the word of God. He said, whatever he said, we can believe him. One thing I know about God is that he is a perfect gentleman. A lot of times we can't, you know, trust our husbands or depend on them or their promises, but we can depend on God. We can trust God for our husbands. We can even trust God when we can't trace him. God said that he would be, he said, lo, I, I will be there always. God is always there. He, and, and, and we just got to get to our prayer closet. Y'all remember in war room, she got to her prayer closet. And when that sister got to her prayer closet, God answered prayer. So God is not going to leave you. So I just want to encourage you to just do what it is that God called you to do so you can get what he has for you. And you got to really learn how to balance the differences. And it's not that difficult. We think it's difficult. Difficult, but it's not that difficult. Again, I am Minister Deidre Russo. I am founder of Truly Well Wives. And in Truly Well Wives, I am a wife coach. I'm a wife mentor. Uh, we have Wives on Fire retreats. We have um, Wives on Fire summits and conferences. And we do a lot of different things for wives. We have Wives Night Out. You know, um, we, we make it fun. Because we want to enjoy ourselves as wives. So I just encourage you to just lean to the Lord. Even when you think that things can't work out, God can turn a mess into a miracle. I know. I've seen him do it day upon day. I've seen a lot of marriages healed. 
I've seen my marriage heal. So I just want to encourage you to trust God and let like let God win the war for you and not you try to win the war for yourself. Amen. Have a safe, safe blessed and wonderful day.